I'm Sandy Peterson, and this is my son Grant, one of the more experienced players of Cthulhu Wars. We're going to talk about specific about the strategies in detail. I'm going to talk about the exact abilities and spell books each faction gets. I'll be talking about strategies for playing each of the factions. Let's go over some particular strategy for the Black Goat faction now. During your first round, what you should try to do is get at least one other gate, get one other gate, and then get a spell book. I recommend either getting have units in four areas, that spell book, really easy to do that. Um, after getting your first gate, you'll have spent four power. You'll spend two more to move some guys out, and then you can spend two more to move them back into safety. Safe from dreams, safe from getting overcaptured. Alternatively, for your first spell book, what you could do instead of the four areas is as your sole action in a round, eliminate two of your cultists. So you will be down to four power after building your gate. Then you spend zero power to kill two cultists off and spend two power to build them back up. This is nice because after this, if you feel like you need to, you can also summon a ghoul to hang out with your cultists over there. For your first spell book, I recommend getting either Frenzy, giving your cultists the combat value, or Necrophagy, allowing your ghouls to hang out with, with other battles and other factions when uh, combat happens around the, the map. For your second round, hopefully you have at least 10 power from the first round. Maybe more if your ghouls manage to capture a cultist or something. And at this point, I strongly recommend summoning Shubligrath herself. If you don't want to summon her yet, if you feel, you're feeling cautious, then it's okay to get another gate. Hopefully have four gates by the end of the second round. Summoning Shubligrath will cost you two cultists, and put your power all the way down to two, leaving you only two power for the rest of the round. With that power, you'll probably want to bring your cultists back so that you don't have a tiny amount of power again for the next round. You'll be pretty well protected at this point with somebody Grath hanging out with our cultists. Okay, so at round three, that's when the game really comes into its own for somebody Grath. At this point, I recommend choosing either to go for a Groth strategy or a Dark Young strategy. Use the Groth strategy if it looks like another faction is already really pulling ahead and you really want to get rid of their cultists. Simply use your Thousand Young power, which should definitely be the spellbook you choose when you summon Shubdiggerath. At that point, that should be presumably the second, maybe the third spellbook you get. So use that to summon your Dark Young, I mean your Migo. Splatter them wherever you feel like you need to splatter them. I call this the Monster Vomit, summoning a bunch of things at once as the Black Goat. Then, um, you spend four power to do that, and just move out your dark, your Migo to where they need to be. There's, there's four areas, you spent two power, and you can start grothing your enemies into oblivion, getting rid of their cultists. Um, this is especially good when one faction is really far ahead, such as Crawling Chaos or Cthulhu, because the other factions will help you vote, kind of, to get rid of all the cultists of that faction, to help them pull behind and give the rest of you some breathing space. An alternative to doing the Groth strategy is to do a Dark Young strategy. Summon out a bunch of Dark Young. It would cost you six power to summon all of them, but you don't really have to. So say you were at 10 power, this brings you down to four. This is something you should do if nobody else has really gotten ahead of anyone. You get the red sign, get the red sign spellbook as soon as you can so that the Dark Young <coughs> provide you with more power and can safely go out and build gates of their own without fear of being dreamed away or captured by monsters. And then you really start getting a powerful, um, durable power base with which to win the game with. From here on out, just spread your monsters across the board, use Avatar, use necroph Necrophagy to spread out, and start doing rituals until you win. Black Goat is pretty simple, fun, and straightforward to play. She kind of just tries to build up a simple, stable power base with the help of the Dark Young and uh, the ability to resummon her monsters so quickly even if they're killed, this is pretty easy to do. So the question is, how to defeat the Black Goat? Okay, so, let's Go ahead. Mm. so beating the Black Goat. Since she can so easily build up a power base early on, especially if she delays getting out Shubdigarath in favor of using Dark Young to get some, build some gates of their own early on in the game, If, to defeat her, what you need to do is mercilessly target her early. 
Even if it looks like she's not pulling ahead, as soon as she summons Shavdigareth and gets uh, her out on the board, she's going to pull ahead pretty fast. So um, don't be ashamed of picking off what appears to be a weak faction at first. Once Shavdigareth is out, she's often surrounded by lots of monsters and all her little gates are well protected by her minions. And at this point, really the best way for every faction to go up against her is to use your great old one on her. Cthulhu, of course, is really straightforward to use on her. You just submerge and emerge with a bunch of powerful units and start maybe killing, hopefully killing Shabdigrath and wiping off her guys by painting them off the gates so you can take those gates for yourself. Crawling Chaos, just use Nyarlathotep to come on down and start beating up on Shabdigrath. Shabdigrath is actually the best target for Nyarlathotep's um, Harbinger ability, which when which activates when he hits, when he kills or pains a great old one. Because Black Goat costs eight to summon, the um, Nyarlathotep can choose to get four power when beating up on Black Goat, or on Shabdigarath. This is uh, more appealing than beating up on, say, Cthulhu, whose official summoning cost is only four, for which he'll only get two power, or the King in Yellow, for which he'll only get two power. And Haster is really a dangerous target for Nyarlathotep because Haster has the power to uh, assign pain and kill results that will end up having Nyarlathotep die. So ultimately, Nyarlathotep is at his best when he comes in and specifically hits, hits up on the Black Goat. He can keep on getting power from painting her and kind of chase her around the map until he kills her with that power he gets. Um, for the Yellow Sign faction, like I said, Haster has the power to assign the pains and kills that are rolled in the combat with him. So if Haster were present, then of course you can just target Shabdigrath and kill her right off. This makes it really hard for Shabdigrath to recover. She has to spend eight power and sacrifice two of her cultists to get her back. That really leaves her wounded, and during that time she also can't do her monster vomit and summon a bunch of um, minions at once. So that's how to beat Black Goat. Pick off her cultists and bases early on, don't be ashamed to do it, and later on, Target Shabdigrath with your Great Old One.